thanks to be here with us in our webinar today. Um, today we'll have a webinar talking about the future home automation with IoT. Um, my name is Duana Ashi, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Um, please note that this webinar is on um, uh, list mode only, so if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to write it down on the right side. There is a feed where you can put your questions and your comments later. Um, so as all of you know that IoT represents the next phase of the Internet revolution, we are speaking today in a panel discussion about four major topics. So first we will start with what is IoT um, and how we can use those smart cases in our smart homes, how to integrate it in our smart homes, and what will be the future or next for home automation with IoT. I would like to um, welcome our expert speakers with you today. We have Rias from Dubai office, Dominique from France office, Yes here from Turkey office, and Hussein from Qatar office. So I hope all of you are already very much in, um, excited. So please start with what is IoT? Thank you, Riaz. Hello, everyone. This is Riaz from Dubai office. We will see the overview of IoT basics and IoT applications in this part of presentation. We all know IoT is becoming a trending topic of discussion in every industry. And also it has a huge potential to influence our lifestyle, how we live and how we react. So that's why it is very significant to know about the basics and general aspects of IoT. As we started networking of personal computers, printers and servers through internet to share and store the information. Later, we started using cloud services to store the files instead of a local drive. And also we use music services to listen the song without downloading it. This evolution increases uh, creating a demand, huge demand for interconnected systems. One of them is IoT. So what is IoT? IoT means Internet of Things. So IoT is a network of a smart devices connected through Internet so that they can interact, collaborate and exchange and analyze the data to take intelligent decisions without a machine or human interaction. So let's see uh, what are the applications of IoT. Every application needs a customized IoT system based on their customer needs and challenges they are facing on the day-to-day -day life. So here are the few examples of IoT applications where the development are going in a very rapid phase. So today in our presentation, in the next presentations, we will see IoT on smartphone like this, more in deeper. So basically, what are the layers of IoT? So IoT has a three layers. So one is the sensors and devices. Sensors could be a standalone, like a temperature sensor or a moisture sensor, soil moisture sensor in an agriculture field. And it could be a part of a device where the bundle of sensors are involved. So for example, smartwatch, it has an accelerometer and heart rate monitor and GPS and so on. So here are the few examples of IoT devices, which is majorly used in smartphone applications and smart home applications. Next layer is data storage and processing. Once the data is pushed to this layer, the data is stored and processed and analyze the insights of the data to take a decision. So this happens on the cloud. Cloud is nothing but a huge interconnected powerful servers to perform the services. Let's see a simple example of IoT, how it works. Here we can play a song from the smartphone on a Spotify app and then listen the song on a Sonos speaker, which is an another IoT device. It works well, it's perfect. So if you see a large scale of applications where thousands of sensors are communicating directly with the cloud, it creates, it creates a huge traffic and it needs a more storage on the cloud. And also it needs a higher bandwidth transmission. 
it's okay in the normal case of application and also if you see there will be a delay on back and forth communication between the sensors and the cloud and so on but it is okay but if you see a time critical iot applications for example where the life or a death situation comes where well, the i guess we have some system. issues with the internet connection where the quick assistance is required and then or a self driving car on a traffic so here the gateway is introduced as a bridge between the sensors and the cloud so once the data is pushed to this layer and it will be filtered and processed and then it's stored to analyze the insights to take a quick decision so benefits of gateway here is to reduce increase the battery life of the sensors where where the it needs a battery operated sensors and then do a faster communication and it reduce the storage and processing requirements on the cloud so the processing the data on the cloud also on a gateway or a sensor level it is called as edge computing so this gives a benefit of a faster communication and then reliable communication between the sensors and a gateway in case of the critical applications so next it is about the communication technologies what are the communication technologies used between the sensors gateway cloud users and everywhere so basically because of the introduction of gateway the sensors and gateway they use a relatively a short this range of transmission network for example zigbee or wifi or lp wan or nfc this kind of short range where they have a quickly they communicate and with the various protocols and then trans the gateway translate into your standard protocol and send it to the cloud that standard protocol one of them is mqtt it is a widely used in the most of the iot applications why it is a very lightweight communication transmission communication for the messaging it works like a publish and then subscribe philosophy for example the sensors any iot sensors it can publish the data on the cloud and then the other iot sensor which needs the data on a specific topic it can subscribe and access the data let's see an example where the different iot applications use different communication network for example the first one is about the healthcare applications where all the sensors and then all the gateway or communicate through a wifi network and then transmit the data to the cloud through a fiber optic network and second one is about the healthcare applications where all the vehicles are connected through a 4g network and then for example if there is an accident an ambulance can take get an information for an alternative route and the third one is about the disaster control application where the that in the middle of the sea or a ocean where the transmission towers are not possible in that case the directly all the sensors gateway they communicate to the cloud through a satellite communication so overall the data security is essential it's in all the layers of iot so if we think about the security the iot must have a security built in in all the layers the data security device security user app to the wifi network or a network security or device to the cloud security or a cloud uh, cloud network security or gateway whatever hope this part of a presentation gives you a brief idea about the various aspects of iot and let's have a deeper look on iot applications on smartphone thank you so much thank you riyas thank you So now we will move to our colleague Dominic from the France office. Yes, uh, thank you, Joanna, for handover. My name is Dominic Donat, speaking from Hager, France. Uh, through these slides, we will show you. Uh, uh, we will show you through basic use cases how IoTs are working in home automation world. At first, as standard products, then linked to the Kinex automation system. Let's go.
Uh, use case is number one. Here we are talking about voice trigger IoT, like Google Home or Alexa from Amazon. As a standalone product, the question you will ask will be the trigger, and the answer you will get is the action. Uh, let's go straight to an example. Alexa, what's the weather like in Paris? And the answer is currently in Paris, it's 24 degrees and cloudy. Or Google, what waking me up at 7 p.m.? Okay, I set the alarm clock at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock p.m. EM, sorry. And linked to the Kinex home automation, it becomes more interesting. The end user can control the house with the voice. Okay, Google, dim the light at 15% in the living room. Or Alexa, open all the shutters. Or Alexa, run the scene, I leave the house. Use cases number two. Here we are talking about loudspeaker IoTs. As standalone products and through the Sonar apps, you can manage music on off, play pause, increase or decrease the volume, go to the next previous song or playlist, display the artist title feedback or the artist uh, or the song title feedback. And linked to the Kinex home automation system, the end user will manage music and display artist as sound title on the existing switches. Example, in the morning, I'm going into the bathroom. Thanks to the automatic switch, the lights switch on only in low lighting condition and start my favorite playlist. Use cases number three. Here we are talking about RGB IoTs from Philips Hue. As a standalone product, as thanks to the apps, you can create a Sorry, I had problem with connection. Can you hear me? It's okay. Sorry, I start again. Yes, yes, Dominic, I can hear you. I would interrupt. Yes, please. Use case number three. Here you are talking about RGB IoTs. As a standalone product, as thanks to the apps, you can create a nice ambience, set brightness level, and choose the colors. Linked to a Kinex home automation system, the end user is also able to create a nice ambience via the existing wiring accessory switches or via touch panels. Example, run a scene yoga by pushing on a switch. We close the shutters at 80% in the dedicated room and we set a relaxing atmosphere like purple color and brightness level at 50%. Num use case number four. Here we are talking about weather station IoT from Netatmo. As a standalone product and through the apps, you will have a follow-up real-time information like air quality, temperature, wind, spe uh, wind speed, and rife, uh, wind, uh, rainfall gauge. And linked to the Kinex automation system and the weather station IoT information, you can automatically switch on the ventilation according to the air quality. Or according to the, weather, if, to the weather information, the system will open closed blinds if the outside temperature and or brightness are too high. And now the last use cases, the number five, is IoT linked to IFTTT. IFTTT, what is IFTTT? is a big cloud in which you have more than 1,000 IoT devices. The aim here is to link trigger from one to action from the others with a, with a basic automatism function. If it's true, if this is true, then I do that. Let's go to a concrete example. It, it's beginning to rain, the trigger from radar station, then change the color, the light color, to blue. That is the actuator's action from the RGB IoTs. And linked to the Kinex home automation, the scene leave the house will run automatically. Example, if I leave the house, 
Here, the trigger is the location of your smartphone. Then activate a Kinex scene, I'm away, which switch off, off all the lights, close all the shutter and blinds, and set HVAC on standby mode. Okay, that's, that is all for my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dominic. And now we will um, move forward to see how we can integrate IoT and smart homes with Yas here. Hello, I am Yas Ruskan from Turkey. I am going to explain how we can easily integrate IoT devices in our system. Now, integration helps capture data from the smart devices and move it into your application to automate processes, support real-time monitoring and controlling. I am going to explain the integration with third-party devices. There are different kinds of devices. One of them is IoT devices, which are connected. We, we are calling these devices connected devices. The other is cameras, audio devices, and multimedia. We are connecting this device to our network, and there is no need to connect internet to this. So when we connect IoT devices to our system, uh, this system must inter uh, use internet. So I am going to explain a live demo. You can see a picture. Uh, this is the, our Hager IoT controller, Domovea 2. It has Kinex port. So with this device, we can easily control our lights, shutter blinds, and heating with Kinex. And we can integrate camera access control system. We are connecting our camera to our home network and there is no need to connect, give internet permission to camera. And we can easily integrate energy monitoring and IoT devices. Now, I want to give an explanation. For example, when we want to integrate a camera in the previous years, it's very difficult to integrate third-party camera to our system. You must open the documentation of the camera, you must find the protocol or link, then you are trying to integrate it, that camera to your system. And if you want to monitor the camera from the outside of your home network, you must open ports in your modem and router. So you, you will face some security issues. With these devices, you must use same manufactured devices because it's too complicated to use camera, to integrate camera. But now there are some standards. All manufacturers are obeying the standards. For example, for in the camera sector, they are using OnVIV standards. This means many of manufacturers are using this standard to produce their product. When you want to integrate a camera to your system, you, you are just clicking search devices or click OnVIV and add your camera IP, username and password is too easy. And with this method, you are not wasting too much time to integrate it. In the past, you are wasting more than one or two hours, you must read main documentation. These are devices which are not connected to internet. These devices using your just only for your home network. Now I am going to explain how we can integrate IoT devices. All IoT devices are using a username and password. For example, in our Hager IoT controller, you are taking an account from Hager website. So when you buy an Hager IoT controller, installer is coming, he is using his username and password. And when he finished the install installation, he's clicking handover section, then the system is automatically sent a message to the customer. When the customer opens this link, now he, uh, you, he is or she is entering his username and password, then the system is controlling with his username and password. When we finish the installation, you can see a sample page. We can control uh, Philips Hue lighting, dimmer lightings, uh, or that if we integrate a camera, you can see the picture. You can easily see the cameras. If we want to use Alexa skills, you know, in the world, it's very famous. If you want to control artificial of the skills of the Alexa, we are open, installing the Alexa application or we are buying an Alexa Echo Dot. Then 
uh, in the sec setting section, we are searching the devices. We are writing a service which we want to integrate it. In here, our example, we are writing Hager Domoware. Click enable to use. Then the system, uh, a new page is coming. It asks us the username and password. So we are entering our IoT devices username and password. So for example, Yasser Scan at Hager.com.tr. When I enter my username and password, Hager services as asking Alexa, Domove, Alexa want to reach your home network. Do you give permission to it? So when I click yes, now Amazon Alexa can easily control your IoT devices, Hager IoT controller. Now you can see some screenshots uh, with about Alexa application. It's easily control your home network directly from its site. So if you want to control your home network from the Alexa application, you can easily control it. How we can do this? Many manufacturers are using API. API means is an interface used by program to access an application. This provides a safety haven for your data to be securely delivered. So one manufacturer, for example, in our example, uh, we use Alexa and Hager Domovea IoT controller. In Hager IoT Domovea is using Amazon Alexa API. So it sends every controlling objects to Amazon Alexa. And also Amazon Alexa gives permission to control that. The other uh, cloud-based platform is IFTTT. Mr. Dominic, a little bit uh, explain this. I am going to explain what IFTTT means. It's if this, then that. We can say that this is a very big cloud-based community. So many hundreds of global enterprises, companies are using this system. So you can easily integrate different brands, different type of devices easily. Hager, Simons, Google, Alexa, you can easily integrate your washing machine, your car, different things in this cloud-based system. Now I want to give some example to understand the IoT integration. For example, when a tweet message is coming from my friend, I want to open a light. So in the website, in your application, you are clicking if, then select Twitter, if didn't if you didn't activated Twitter account before, Twitter web page is coming automatically, and you are entering your username and password of Twitter. Then system now reach Twitter, and you are writing the messages, and then you click then object. You are clicking Philips Hue lighting, for example, in IoT controller. Now someone, my friends, uh, sent a message. The lights open automatically. For example, in uh, in a uh, meeting group, you can integrate your calendar, iPhone calendar or Google calendar. It's not important. If the event is comes automatically, open the projection mode. For example, the other thing, the other example, uh, when I leave from my home, uh, run the goodbye scenario. In the application, you are choosing location. If I leave this location, then run goodbye scenario. You can easily create some scenarios about goodbye scenario. For example, I have a vacuum cleaner. So in my goodbye scenario, just start the vacuum cleaner. Then close my lights and make uh, energy saving mode of air conditioned devices. Thank you. Thank you, Yassi, very much for that interesting insight. Um, and now we are going to move about what is the next for IoT Homes Automation. Let's have a look. Thank you, Joanna. Good morning, everybody. This is Hussein speaking from uh, Qatar office. Uh, a lot of information are given from our, from our colleagues. We expect a lot of developments in the IoT world. In this uh, part of this presentation, we will go into some figures in terms of uh, the market value and in terms of the uh, future number of IoT devices in the world. And we will go through some applications and some new developments. 
So the future of smart home automation, the IoT is expected to transform or have a powering transformation of many different areas, enterprises, consumers, and government. In this chart, we can see the figures of four years of the past four years in the consumer section and the business cross industry and the business vertical specifics. What's linked to our smart homes is in the consumer section. We see that since 2016, there was almost 4 billion units installed into this part. And by this year, the number was multiplied by four or uh, by three. It's almost 12 to 13 billion units. These are applications or units that took part of the smart home automations applications. If we see the connected devices, we see a, an increase by more than 300% from now. This is, uh, we are talking here about the total number of connected devices, not about only the consumers or the smart home. This is IoT devices in general. So in five years from now, we will have almost 64 billion devices. We expect to have a complete connectivity of IoT from this year and beyond. These connected devices are found in many different areas. We can find them in our homes and even outdoor. What's linked to our applications today, we can start with the smart appliances, for example, the equipment Hello, this is uh, Thomas, your host for this webinar. It seems the sound has been frozen, Hussein. Yes, you're back with us. Hello, yes, you can hear me? Can hear you. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, sorry. So I will start in this, in, in this part. Yeah, so... Uh, I will repeat again a, a small part of this uh, slide. Uh, speaking about the units or the connected devices, we can find the smart appliances in our homes, like the one in the kitchen, the smart ovens, grills, and refrigerators. Of course, we will have material or devices related to the safety and security systems, like sensors, cameras, and others. A good part of devices will be in the smart energy metering, which covers the smart thermostat and the smart lighting. Also a good part will be in the sports gear in our uh, uh, transportation uh, vehicles like cars, bicycles, scooters. So we, shall, we are expecting to find IoT units everywhere. Currently, we have a lot of application already, a lot of gadgets we are having, we can buy it from the market so we can connect it through our homes. But in the next five years, we will have it more and more. To give you an idea of the uh, home IoT market value, uh, in 2020 this year, it is approximated to be $40.9 billion. And in two years, we are expecting it to hit $54 billion. If we go back to 2017, and if we consider a six years, so from 2017 to 2020, the, mark, the home IoT market value is doubled. It's from almost 27 billion to 54 billion dollar. This will give us an example uh, how evolving is this market is going on. So we will have a lot of uh, investments from different parts of the or from different indus industries, the healthcare education and of course in our smart home so going to the main question what's next in smart homes 
we need to start in a very interesting uh, topic here, which is the fusion of IoT, artificial, artificial intelligence, AI, and uh, 5G, the fifth with a high-speed transmission and communication of data. And in the IoT, in the intelligent behavior and smart, in the intelligent behavior and machine learning, together with IoT, we expect a lot amount of data to be available for the users. More and more devices will have that chance to, to transmit and to get and execute data in a fast way, in a correct way, and of course, in a smart way. What will change? As mentioned in the applications by Dominique and uh, Yasser about the voice assistant, the digital assistant, everybody of us knows that all smart homes have Bixby or Siri, uh, we will have gadgets in our homes. So in this part, we will have an evolution in digital assistant, digital assistant or sound assistant as it is called. So through artificial intelligence, these devices will understand us in a better way and they will execute the functions that we are speaking in a smarter way. Also, another place where we expect some change is the robots. Already we have robots that uh, have cleaning services in our homes, like vacuum cleaners. But through the development and the uh, enormous speed of upgrades happening in the artificial intelligence world and the robots, we expect these robots to have more and more functions, especially in the safety and security. Some applications are being developed now to have a robot that can guard our, our home or can uh, help us in the home with different, uh, different services other than cleaning. An interesting part, of course, uh, a lot of us have uh, spent uh, a huge uh, amount of his time in the kitchens in the quarantine time. So uh, imagine everything in the kitchen is smart. So uh, your oven, your grill, your microwave, your refrigerators, they will give you alerts. They will give you, uh, when the, fire, the, the food is done, you can control them from your phone. They can communicate through each other. So each one of these appliances have, will be smart, having an IoT communication. A lot of manufacturers worldwide, like LG or Samsung, already supply smart appliances, but we expect in the next five years or from five to 10 years to have everything in our home smart and be able to be communica communicated, controlled from, from our uh, voice assistance and from our homes. We don't stop here. Actually, we have a lot of application. I will mention uh, three applications here. We will have smart and app bedrooms. Of course, uh, using smart clocks. Uh, the moment you wake up, your coffee will be ready. Your shower, uh, your hot water in the shower will be ready. A lot of uh, users. Uh, another area is the future of delivery services. We will have a self-driving driven cars delivering our services and doing the order, of course, through our smart home. And this is a very interesting part, at least for the technical engineers. We will have fewer clashes of communication protocols in the presence of IoT. As all devices and systems are IoT based now, we will uh, have less clashes in the gateways. We know that if we have two kinds of systems, we will have gateway between these systems. So as these two, two systems communicate through IoT, it is straightforward communication, fast and reliable. That's it for my part. Back to you, Joanna. Thank you so much. Joanna?
Now I think uh, Joanna will reconnect soon. Yes, I'm sorry, I had some issues with my internet again. Um, thank you very much, Hussein, for your um, presentation. It was great to see what is coming in the future and what kind of things we can live, and especially the kitchen part. I like it personally very much. So now we go to our conclusion. Um, as we have seen, the IoT world becomes more and more important for our lives, as much as electricity and air conditioning. And thank you guys very much for the nice presentation and the inputs we got all today. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask now. So the first question we have from Mr. Ahmad. Nowadays, most manufacturers are in any discipline Discipline are developing smart features in their products, cars, home applications, sports, equipments, etc. What is your thought in simplifying integration in platforms? So, Hussein, do you want to add to something? Yeah, uh, as mentioned in, in, in my last slide about the less clashes and the, uh, and the communication between different protocols, uh, as as everything now is IoT based or communicating through IoT, the integration is so simple. We saw the smart speakers, for example. Uh, this is one small example, and we can copy it and paste it into others through smart speaker. In the in the past days, to con to integrate music system or sound system in a in a home automation system, it needs a uh, a lot of work, it needs a lot of uh, equipment and a lot of uh, money to execute. Now you can bring a smart speaker, which is IoT based, and you just plug it to power and it's done. So this is what we say by uh, simplified integration. And we will see it in home appliances and others. Hopefully this, this answered the question correctly. But uh, in case uh, more clar clarification, uh, we can we can speak about it also. I think Riaz would like to say something as well. Yeah, please. I think the camera of Riaz and Riaz. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Jonah. Just adding to the Usain's point, just uh, it's my point of view about this uh, question, particularly uh, by Ahmed. Because here, like not like uh, KNX, because we are not using a standard protocol by all suppliers. Because here, most about the there is a two things. One is the communication protocol and the uh, communication medium. The communication medium, as I explained before, like uh, it can use a Zigbee or Z-Wave. Like a Zigbee is a uh, our open protocol and Z-Wave is a proprietary one. This is like this, but the gateway is the main and the role doing it to translate the data and sending to your standard protocol, which is MQTTT, I said. So here, that is the reason why uh, we cannot simplify because either like a KNX all should have a common protocol, but it is uh, practically a uh, little bit complicated because there are a variety of applications and it's not limited to a lighting or a shutter or a smart home. It could be in any industry or in a factories or it could be in a healthcare or it could be in uh, agriculture. So this is my point of view. So there's still there are developments going on to have confined to a common protocol, <coughs> common platform to where they can communicate. It's still, I feel it's Thank under you. Thank you. Thank you, Riaz. So we have one more question. Hello. Um, here you are controlling lights. What about the other brands on the Zigbee and the Z-Wave networks? Can that be con controlled? Um, uh, uh, Riaz, yeah? Yeah. Yes, okay. please. Here, uh, again, this IoT, I said, it's not limited to any specific applications. And also, uh, the gateway is the one I said. And Zigbee is a common protocol where the Philips Hue, for example, they are using a Zigbee communication between the lights. And then they are using a Hue bridge. That is the one gateway in this case, what we explained. So all lights are talking to the gateway, and gateway translates. So again, it's all about the gateway. This is the way it is. 
so it could be controlled the your answer is yes possible once there is a gateway and through our hager solution also we have a domovia is a it's a visualization as well as a gateway for iot so we can directly communicate and then uh, integrate with the philips hue and sonos and alexa this all it's possible okay next question so it's all about the gateway <laughs> Okay, um, uh, this market is growing a lot. What will be the next features of Hega devices regarding energy consumption and air conditioning, I think? What will be the link between um, IoT and Coviva? So, Hussein, you would like to say something? Uh, yeah, I can add uh, a lot of things on this question. So, the first part is... Uh, what will the next features of Hager devices regarding energy consumption? Uh, we already launched a new uh, line, product line of energy metering, and uh, it's connected to uh, Canex through a Canex interface. Uh, this uh, line uh, is uh, can can be applied on many application, one phase, three phase, on many communication uh, uh, protocols like Ambus, Modbus, Pulse and others. And as long as it is connected to our Canex, it is connected to IoT also. And the second part, what will be the link between IoT and Coviva? Uh, as we know, Coviva is a gadget launched by Hager a few years back, and we have a, a new version of Coviva under development. And uh, I think IoT is part Coviva. So uh, in case you have a retrofit application or you need a small application in your home, you can still utilize Coviva device with IoT, the same gadgets. I think maybe uh, 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 any of my colleagues can add something on this. It's OK. Yes, Dominique, um, Riyad, any comment on this? I think maybe we have, um, uh, I have missed the air conditioning part. The air conditioning part is uh, part of the integrations happening and we have a lot of uh, applications. So, uh, okay. yeah. Thank yes, you. Uh, just to add something about uh, what will be the link between IoT and Coviva. So in IFTTT, we have, uh, we have Coviva, Those, the link is down through the IoT. So our RF product is linked to Coviva and Coviva is in the cloud of IoT. So you can, uh, you can manage your, your light from, a, from every IoT you want. So say you, you take over 100 kilometers per hour with your BMW, switch the light on in my house. It's possible. Thanks to Coviva and RF products from Haga. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question. Hi, Hassan. Knowing that the 5G and backbone will be under big platform like Google platform, where would the role of Haga comes up in IoT, knowing that the different products and applications will be directly IoT? Hi, Joseph. It's been a long time. Yeah, so... Uh... 5G and IoT and Hager solutions. So I can summarize this in the applications we have on uh, IFTTT, as mentioned. If you uh, register to IFTTT and you make an account, you go to the search section, you search for Hager, you will see a uh, few of our applications you can, you can connect. And of course, this is uh, uh, a big platform. You can do your own application if you want, personally and it can be used also by public. So uh, I think uh, the link between these three areas is uh, you can find them in this website. It's straightforward and it's very simple application. It's not complicated. Uh, so uh, hopefully we can uh, have some time to do it together in the future. Okay, I think Yasir would like also to um, add something on that question. Yes, uh, in, now in our Hagar IoT controller, we have an integration with Alexa and Google Assistant. So this means we are interface to communicate with Google Assistant or Alexa 
you can easily control all of your device with Google. So when you say turn off all lights, Google finds the lights, then it turning all of them. So without IFTT, directly we are taking comments from the Google and Alexa. So we are ready to 5G or different IoT devices. Thank you. Okay, um, can we set up communication channel for better access to the software developers of the Domovea app? Um, there are many challenges faced with the stability of the IoT pathways. Um, yes, here. Yes, maybe Hussein, you would like to add something? Communication channels. I think this is a uh, software development question. So uh, I have no answer on this. Okay, Joanna, we will try Joanna, to find the right answer. Joanna. Yes, 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 here. Yes. Uh, in normal way, uh, in <coughs> Domovey application, if some pro manufacturer want to communicate with Domovey application, they will use IFTTT. For, so when they enter the developer side of these services, they can find explanation of the codes. So when they integrate their system to IFTTT, it's easily integrate to Hager Domovey. But in general way, we are in Hager IoT controller. We have some integration without IoT, like Philips Hue or Sonos. These devices are working without internet. Uh, so there are different ways to ways to integrate their devices to our cloud. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> And regarding business point of view, do you think designing and implementing residential smart system through approved installer technician, not through a company, will increase the demand since it will be near to customer and I think it will be cheaper? Yes, Hussein? Yeah, so um, the, uh, this depends on the market, as we know, uh, and the uh, and each market have different aspects. In the Middle East, it's very hard to find a qualified installer or technician. So uh, customers and people are, uh, let's say, obliged to go for companies. Of course, this, these companies have overheads, speaking about business point and commercially. So these companies have, have overhead and have a lot of uh, things to do. Uh, the price, of course, will be more. Uh, if we go to the European market, especially our biggest market in Germany, where we have the biggest market share. The installers and the technicians there can install the system. Of course, the cost will be less. And you will have a, uh, your system uh, with, a, with, a, with a, a smaller scale, of course. In the Middle East, uh, most the home automations, mostly, let's say, depends also on the GCC or the uh, uh, Levant area, so in the GCC, mostly the home automation systems are in villas or palaces or bigger. In the Levant area, it is in, also in villas, but mainly in apartments. In Europe, it's in apartments and hotels. So hopefully this, this answered uh, the question. Thank you. Riaz, would you like to add something? Yeah. Uh, this one about uh, this also uh, it's my point of view because it's easier the main objective of the IOT devices which is uh, now upcoming in the market it's all like a DIY do it yourself so for example even our smartwatch and then we are integrating with uh, uh, the like you know Alexa like this so you can ask the Alexa about your update on the traffic update from your home to office and about the reminders you can set so this is the main objective of it. I think it is a more way to go about the IoT. Maybe in the near future, we will have this kind of self-installations. So just you buy it. But again, it comes to your point about uh, the sensors like uh, devices. 
so because uh, like if you use everything iot for example from a tv from a, even a, every light is an iot then it creates a huge uh, you know uh, the traffic and then it needs a huge transmission and you need a huge network of uh, cloud this all in uh, it makes the system expensive how usain saying that considering that one to simplify it is better to have their own standalone network or from any supplier and we can do integration this is the way we reduce the traffic and we reduce the cost and this is all yeah uh, i think i can add Riaz, on this that uh, hager already have different kind of systems in smartphone as we know uh, our uh, canx system it have the ep and it have the ats so the easy one is uh, usually directed for installers and uh, technicians and the ETS which is uh, concerned with the professionals uh, people who needs to do programming on site and needs to have a, a electrical engineering background and a lot of networking background so uh, and of course we we, we never we never uh, forget about the uh, Coviva gadgets so we have three levels Coviva Coviva, the normal person, as you are setting up your Chromecast or your uh, mobile into your home, uh, you can do the Coviva by yourself. So uh, this is the first level. The second level is the uh, easy system. Uh, you can still buy some easy material, easy uh, the, the, the system name of, uh, of Canex devices, and the technician can do it uh, through a programming tool. And the ATS, which is the third level, of course, uh, each level will have a limited uh, limitation in the in the technicalities and in the features or in the sorry in the applications. So, and the ATS, which needs an uh, a computer, a programmer, and an engineer, it's the highest level. So, hopefully, uh, uh, this also clear this uh, point. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, how is it in India? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm working in Dubai, so most likely I know about the Middle East market. But as an Indian, so we also know about the India market also. Yeah, there also as a automation systems, it is growing. The from the recent years, so many uh, as system integrators are there. Even the KNX forum, they have made it. So I think the market is booming there. And then more like you know the, the uh, it is more about the cost effective solution. More we achieve the cost effective solution wherever it is in India or anywhere, the market will boom. That is where now IoT, all uh, research and everything development is going on to make it do it yourself and cost effective and in all aspects, security of. Can you briefly functionally different, different between IoT controller and Domovea? IoT controller, can I answer this question, uh, Jonah? Yes, yes, please, yes, go ahead. See, it is about IoT controller is the first uh, the launch of uh, Hager uh, for the IoT platform. This one, it is mainly do a gateway, just a gateway. That's it. It is a gateway between the various uh, uh, products. For example, there, are, there is a direct uh, communication is possible with uh, Sonos and then Philips Hue uh, and then Netatmo, which is a security based cameras and moisture sensor. This all there and the Netatmo face recognition camera. This is all direct communication you can do with this one. And then, of course, it's all to the KNX. It's become a bridge. And then IFTTT. So then it opens uh, the li limitless possibility. You can do with any appliances and with anything with an IFTTT. When it is complies to IFTTT, then you can do anything. There are so many protocols. But if it comes to the uh, Domovia, the developments are done because here earlier the Domovia is only for visualization. So now the IoT gateway also a part of uh, Domovia. So you can do now visualization as well as IoT gateway. It is more cost effective. That is where my previous answer, it links to that. So now it became a cost effective. If you buy a Domovia, you can have IoT device integration as well as you can do your smartphone integration. You can visualize connected and controlled from anywhere, any place. Okay, thank you very much. So, any other questions? Oh, 
Okay, well, thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoyed and it was um, helpful to know more about IoT and smart homes. Um, we will appreciate if you could um, spend a few minutes after this webinar and answer our um, questionnaire. Um, I wish you all of you a good day. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything about Hega, please just visit our website. Um, stay safe. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, guys.